Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to learn about how to conduct a, a decision tree analysis using Python. So let's see what we can learn. So I'm here inside Python and in this first cell right here at the top, I have a whole lot of different modules that I'm going to be using in order to make this analysis successful. So we're going to have to use pandas for a little bit. Uh, we're going to import some data from PyDataset. We're going to be using several different uh, methods and functions from sklearn. Also from uh, st string IO for dealing with, uh, for moving text strings around. And then these last three, <coughs> excuse me, are for visual, oh, excuse me, are for visualization purposes down here. This will make more sense when you experience it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use a data set called star is from Pi data set. And we're going to try to predict whether somebody is getting free lunch or not based on their, you know, their math scores and their reading scores. That's our goal in this video. So here I'm already setting up my data set here as you know, DF and this first little line of code right here in the second line, excuse me, is I'm trying to count how many people are getting free lunch as a yes or no. So when I press control enter, you can see here about 3000 people are getting, are not getting free lunch and about 2,800 are getting free lunch. So it's about a 50, 50 split split, if you will. So I did that by using the dot group by, and then inside here, I put the name of the variable that I'm looking at the categorical variable. And then I count it with that last piece of code right there. Now I want to just show you what the actual data set looks like just real quick. So, in this cell, I'm just going to type DF. That's the name of my object that has all of my data. Press Control Enter. And so you can see right here, we have a lot of rows, 5,748. And it looks like we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different attributes or variables, whatever you want to call them. Now, we're not going to use all of these for the sake of simplicity. All we're going to use is the math score, this is a, uh, excuse me, a continuous variable, the reading score, another continuous variable, and we're going to try to predict whether or not they get free lunch. That is our categorical variable. So that's gonna be our dependent variable. Now we need to actually prepare our data and we gotta do a little bit of um, adjustments here. So here's what we need to do. In this first line of code, I am storing all of the independent variables that I'm going to use here in an object called X. And so you can see here I got math and I got reading here, total reading score, total math score. Next, because my dependent variable is a string, I have to convert that into numeric values for the actual uh, algorithm that we're going to use. So the code is right here. I'm overwriting DF. Uh, DF data data frame, you know, that's the name of my data set free lunk. That's, that's how they put it. And so I'm replacing it with a one. So wherever they see a yes, put a one. <clears throat> and then in this third line of code, I'm telling it in free lunk, because that's, that's the name of it. Wherever you see a no, put a two. That's what we're doing there. And so now uh, I save all this by pressing control enter. And I can show you what it looks like real quick by doing this. And so that's what it looks like now. But trust me, those are numbers. <laughs> it just is not showing them right now. Now we're going to move to our modeling. And so again, this is not that complicated. Here's the code for the modeling. And so here's what's going on here. In the first line of code, I'm kind of setting up the, the specifications for the model. So CLF, I'm using tree.decisiontree classifier. That's what I'm using in this for classifying because my variable, my dependent variable is a categorical variable. So I need, I need to use a classifier. Now this argument right here inside the parentheses, <clears throat> this is mainly for teaching purposes. What I'm telling Python is that I want, when you make a split, make sure that the, the sample size is at least 2000. I did that because I want a simple tree because I'm trying to teach how to do this. If I don't put a specification like this in there, I'll have these really small splits of like 10 and 50 and 100, or 100, <clears throat> and the tree will be very, very complicated, and it'll be hard to explain that in a 10 minute video. So that's why that's there. But you may not need that when you do this for yourself. So I run all this. Oh, line number two right here. 
I actually fit my model. So I'm saying CLF and I'm doing CLF.fit. And so you can see here, the first argument is for my independent variables and the second argument is for my dependent variable. And I press control enter and it's just about almost done here. Now we're gonna make a picture of it. And this is where it gets really complicated in terms of the coding and it's hard to try to explain this in a simple manner. So in line number one, I'm setting up my class names. This is because when I make my chart, I want to know if it's classified as, as a yes or a no. And so this line of code right here in line number one, it becomes important right here in line number three, or excuse me, line number four. And we'll talk about that in a second. Now, line number two has to do with the string input. It's kind of hard to explain what's happening here. It's more of a trust me and see what happens sort of thing. But what's happening is that this information in line number two becomes very, very important right here in line number three, as you can see right here. And also you can see it shows up here in line number five as well. So that's kind of what that's for. Now the export graph viz, this is for the visualization. So again, the classifier right here, this is the name of the model right here. As I already mentioned, this is coming from our second line of code right here in the cell. The fill is true is just to make it pretty. You don't really need that. I put the feature names, otherwise it, it won't tell me what the name of the feature is. Another name for feature is variable, variable or attribute, whatever you want to call it. And I already explained what this class name thing is about. This helps me to label each box. You'll see this in a second. Now graph, again, this is, this is for the visualization. Notice how we're using that dot data stuff again, dot underscore data. This is where it gets important as well. And then lastly, we have the image. So if I press, so here's the output right here, as you can clearly see. So it, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we're just, you know, you know, messing around. Here's what's happening. If your total reading score is less than 435, you go to the left. That means true. Yes, my score on reading is less than 435. So then it asks here, you know, if the score is less than 415, you also say true. And so then when you get to the bottom, what's happening is that if somebody has a score less than 435 and also less than 415, that means that no, they're not getting free lunch. What doesn't seem to make sense, but we're, we're just playing, we're just messing around here. Now, if their score is less than 435, okay, true. But if their score is not less than 415 over here, then they're also not getting free lunch. Again, that seems counterintuitive. Often we connect uh, you know, a reading score, a lower reading score with, you know, receiving some sort of public assistance, but not necessarily. Again, but this is play data, so we're just kind of messing around. Again, so reading score less than 435 is false, go this way, all right? Reading score less than 496, let's say false again, all right? And so then you can see right here that most of the time they're classified as yes, all right? So we kind of gone through several of these. So the first thing in the box is the variable that is causing the split. The second thing that you're seeing right here is the genie. This is the probability of a misclassification. So you want the genie to be as low as possible. Then we have our sample size. Then we have our total number of yeses and our total number of noes here. So whichever one has a higher value, that's the, the name, the classification for that box. So in this first example, 2,973 were clearly classified as yes, that's larger then 2,775, and therefore, we classify this as yes. We work our way down. So again, you know, it takes time to look at these things and to learn about them. One thing I think I forgot to mention was the samples. If you look at this number right here, it's um, going to be the total sample size at that particular split. And you can see most of them are almost all above 2,000 because I specified that. And so that's kind of how it works. Now, for the evaluation, this is another interesting part. First, we have to do our predictions. Now, we're not doing this quite the correct way. You're supposed to have a test data set, but what we're doing here is that we're going to predict using our model, but then reusing the actual data we use to train the model, which is not quite correct, but it, we're trying to save time here. So I press Control Enter. Now, we can see what is actually going on. So, you know, I can actually show you real quick. Let's see here. And so you can see these are the predictions going through the file. No, no, yes, yes, no, et cetera. 
now we can look at the actual classifications and, and get some useful information here. So here we go. This is where you can clearly see where we got no no's right. So that's um, 1,725 and then yes, yes, 1,832. And then we misclassified, um, you know, we thought it was no, but we got a yes. That happens sometimes. And we thought it was a yes, but it was a no, you know, type one, type two errors, if you will. And so that gives us some insights there. And then of course, there's one more really useful function. And that is uh, the metrics here. Oh, by the way, this is a pd.crosstabs. So pandas.crosstab, and then you put in your y, that was your original dependent variable information. And then y pred, that was where we did the predictions, y underscore pred, excuse me. So the last piece of information. And so here, you can see a lot of great information for trying to understand how your model did. So overall, it looks like the actual accuracy was about 62%, which is you know not that great. But it also gives you information on precision and recall. And so precision is like, is telling you the total, the quantifies the number of positive class predictions that actually belong to the positive class. So it's dealing with how accurate you are at, at looking at positive cases. And then recall is looking at comparing your positive cases to the positive cases plus the false positives, if you will. And then the F1 score kind of takes into consideration the precision and the recall to give you a better sense of how your model is doing. These are standard metrics for classification. So let me see if I can go back and try to summarize you know, this video and wrap it up. What we did here was we took a look at how to do a decision tree in Python. And so we began by, of course, setting up all of the different various modules that we would need. Then we went forward to and created our data set star. We are trying to figure out how many people to predict how many what people were getting free lunch. And then right here, we prepared our data right here. This is the, the dependent variable. And then right here, we made some uh, reclassifying our dependent variable. And we took a quick look at it in line number four. Down here in this cell under modeling, we actually set up our actual model. You couldn't actually see anything. It's not like regression. So you know, we set up our decision tree first. Then we put in our data right here using the, the fit function. And then we made our visualization, which is rather complicated up here at the top. And you can see how it splits apart. So it goes from reading down to reading again. And what we found was is that generally people who got better scores were um, often receiving free lunch, which is kind of counterintuitive. And down here, we did our prediction in this particular cell right here, where we were trying to, to, to evaluate our model performance. And then we got the output right here. So I would like to thank you so much for watching uh, that you took the time to take a look at this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.